What is going on everybody, James Hancock here, back to do a quick reaction video to the second official trailer for Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Now, I had a bit of a late one last night, but around like 11 or 11.30, I kind of pried my eyelids open to glance at the news, and I see that people have already been talking about this for hours, so I'm a little bit behind all the other reactions, but as I glanced at the headlines, I saw that there was something about Rey wielding a double-bladed lightsaber and turning to the dark side, so unfortunately, a little bit of the trailer has already been spoiled for me, but damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead as they say, but I do need to issue one quick correction from a trailer reaction video on Friday. I was all fired up, I was really enjoying the trailer to The Mandalorian, and for whatever reason, I kept calling Gina Carano Carla Gugino. Now, I love and adore both actresses, they have very different skill sets, very different talents, but they're obviously two different people. Gina Carano, former MMA star, was in Deadpool, she was in Haywire. Carla Gugino, she's been in a ton of movies for like the last 25 years. Check out Jet on Cinemax if you have not done so yet, but at any rate, I did need to issue that correction. I was a little embarrassed, but I liked my trailer reactions. I didn't want to pull the whole thing down because of one slip up on my part. But I just have one thing to say before I watch this trailer. I do hope they'll at least allow Daisy Ridley's character to experiment a little bit with the dark side because I've been saying this for years. Both the video games like Knights of the Old Republic and a lot of the animated projects, they've experimented with a lot of force-fielding evil female characters. And nine times out of ten, they're insanely cool. And I don't understand why the live-action movies have failed to give us an evil female character. I mean, think about like Kate Blanchett and Thor Ragnarok as Hela. She was awesome. And the Star Wars franchise definitely needs some characters along those lines. So I think the future of Star Wars for me as a fan actually might be more in streaming. I couldn't really care less about any future Star Wars movies from Ryan Johnson. I'm a little wary about David Benioff and D.B. Weiss after seeing them drop the ball with the season finale of Game of Thrones. But The Mandalorian, I know they're already at, uh, I know John Favreau's already working on season two, and it just looked like samurai stories and westerns and star wars all kind of colliding together so who knows maybe that's where my interest will kind of reside moving forward but for now we're going to see what uh good old jj abrams has to say with this final film of the trilogy so let's start the sucker right now he should have just done the whole trilogy but that's another conversation for another day little nostalgia. I imagine they're going to go all in on the nostalgia play because they know that's what will bring old fogies like myself back into the fold. This is a shameless nostalgia play. <laughs> wow. I mean, I like a highlight reel of the old Star Wars films, but still, it's a, it's a little much. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations. I'm less now. nostalgic for these three. But this is your fight. With red eyes, so you going, so going to the dark side. Oh, it's got a double bladed blue. Yes, it's in. Interesting. That wasn't necessarily the coolest, most dramatic shot, but I hope it's not just a, uh, a tease of some kind or maybe some vision of the future where she might go bad. But, I mean, say what you will about the prequels letting us down in a lot of ways. I remember there was one bit that I really enjoyed in the trailer for Revenge of the Sith where it was like a slow push and on Anakin as he turned around and we saw that he, his, uh, his pupils had gone yellow and he was like, you know, imbued with the dark side. And it was this beautiful, cool, evil, chilling moment. And at the time I thought, yes, they're going for it. Like we're going to see that, that really, really dark, evil Star Wars movies that I've been craving. It ended up not really happening, but it was a cool shot. 
But I think that shot from the Revenge of the Sith trailer was superior to that one bit with Ridley right there. I mean, Rey, she's so sweet and so innocent and has shown so few ingredients that would even show capacity for the dark side. I have a hard time buying that they'll go all in on a switch. Although you never know, maybe at the last minute she'll decide just to go all evil in order to kill the Emperor and then, you know, <coughs> start getting over a cold. And then Kylo Ren and she will have to go, you know, dark versus dark, who knows, but that's not a lot to work with. So anything I say about that will be pure conjecture on my part. So what can I say about that trailer? I mean, the nostalgia play was cool, but the trailer doesn't really show us that much. I don't know if my anticipation has gone up or down. I kind of preferred the first one. At least we had that. We at least had a scene where we see her leaping into the air and going to work, and that at least gave us a sense of drama and excitement. I think the first trailer was a stronger one, but I will be there on opening day. J.J. Abrams. While a lot of people like to make fun of his mystery box style of storytelling and his overabundance of lens flares, but he is very solid. I mean, I enjoyed the Star Trek from 2009. I enjoyed The Force Awakens, and I'm hoping he'll deliver on this movie as well. Am I hoping for a movie on the level of Empire Strikes Back? Well, that's probably wildly unrealistic, but I know he also had very little time to work with in terms of kind of turning the ship around and getting the franchise going his direction after Ryan Johnson kind of yanked it in a completely different direction. It's the first time I've ever seen a, a trilogy where in the middle, one filmmaker decides to go in, in a completely different direction, and then you have a filmmaker come back and try to do a course correction. I'd have to think long and hard about that if there's another example like that. In any event, I'll be rooting for it, but I can't say that I'm super optimistic, but I would love to be wrong, and I'd love for the movie to be the coolest Star Wars movie ever. We'll see. But at a bare minimum, Mandalorian November, I'm very fired up. Sorry, I keep covering up my mouth with my hand because I keep worrying I'm going to have like a coughing fit and that phlegm's going to fly in all directions. Maybe that's the sign I should wrap this sucker up, but hope you enjoyed this reaction video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Give the video a like, all the good stuff. If you want to talk about Star Wars or J.J. Abrams or any of that stuff, you can find me on Twitter at Colbrex. But thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.